Welcome everyone, it's here. Alpha 6 is now available for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. I'm going to quickly review some of the key points to this and then we're going to take a look at what it has to offer. Flash fires is a big one and I'm hoping I'm going to show you an example of how the flash fires can quickly spread and destroy a ship. I went in real quick and played a 5v5 destroyer duel. Uh, I took five uh, American 1940 destroyers against five Russian destroyers. And very quickly, two, two of the Russian destroyers were consumed by flash fires from my 5-inch guns. Uh, so yeah, uh, it says, In consequence, you must be extra careful when you design your ships, especially your battleships and battlecruisers, which heavy, carry heavy armament, because if they lack the necessary armor protection or other safety measures, they'll be very vulnerable to flash fires that can blow them apart. So the detailed combat statistics, that's another one that we're going to look at today a little bit. Uh, you can evaluate with precision the combat effectiveness of your ships by monitoring their hit percentage, the damage and penetration power against the enemy ships. By selecting your own ships, you have access to their detailed logs of damage. Uh, music, which we won't explore because, uh, for obvious reasons, there's copyright issues with playing music while I'm making videos. Uh, a lot of new models for destroyers. There's some new models for cruisers, um, primarily, or actually only, uh, Japanese light cruisers and two Spanish cruisers. Bunch of new missions, and we will get into those missions in the coming days. I'm not entirely sure we're going to do that today. So let's go ahead and take a look. So Naval Academy, we'll take a look at that real quick, uh, just to look at the new missions that are out there. Uh, and here they are, Modern versus Old Destroyers. Uh, design Modern Destroyers in Combat versus Numerous Less Advanced Rivals. Uh, torpedo Banzai. A fleet of powerful Japanese destroyers commanding an all-out torpedo attack against a USA fleet. The enemy fleet has a, uh, three battleships, a battle cruiser, two light cruisers. Looks like a total of nine destroyers and then eight transports. Uh, Mission Impossible. Attempt a suicide attack with your destroyers against a much stronger naval force which raids your convoy. Uh, so a battleship and looks like five destroyers and we have a bunch of transports that we need to keep alive while also building destroyers. So a lot of the, you'll notice the theme here. The, the whole update is all about destroyers. It's all about making that a more significant part of the game, a more customizable part of the game. So there's a lot involved here. French and Japanese destroyers fight in open sea. And then contest in the Black Sea. Germans contest with Russians for control of the Black Sea. Kind of cool because we just did a custom scenario basically built around that very idea. Uh, that was our Operation White Lion that was a user-suggested scenario that was all about control of the Black Sea. So it's kind of cool to see uh, that happening now. So, so there's that. Let's go ahead and take a look now um, at some of what we have to offer with the destroyers with the new technology so i'm going to go real quick to let's say the the british and we're going to clear everything else out and just look at destroyers for a minute so let's go ahead and design our ship so you can see right away we've got five different destroyer options now uh, all of them roughly the same size. Here's a modern destroyer, destroyer leader. Uh, and you can see it's it's a little bigger and it's going to offer us some more options as far as uh, our builds go. So um, there's an advanced tower right here. There's a secondary tower, a bunch of secondary tower options. Now I'm noticing right away that the British tower options are different then the American tower options and the tunnel options are definitely very, or the, the funnel options are very different. So I want to switch over to the Americans because it seems like there was a little more there. So again, here's our destroyer leader. Now you can see here the, the tower options, the modern tower one, kind of a unique tower. Secondary tower, same kind of deal. Uh, we've got a number of different options available to us. So there's a lot more customization available. Definitely with the funnels. They've so got these thin funnel fours. You've got the tall angled funnels. And then you've got the dual funnel here, which is similar to what they had before. But again, a lot more room to design some interesting destroyers. So I'm very happy 
with what they've done with all the destroyers. I'm going to start with two funnels and see where that gets us. Uh, I'm not actually going to go with torpedoes on this particular destroyer because of what I want to be able to show you are the flash fires that can erupt on enemy ships. And so I want to get as many 5-inch guns as possible to try and start those fires. And it looks like right now we're at 60% engine efficiency, but if we go to better engines, that ought to be able to fix that there. Now we're at 100. We can actually go all the way up, I think, to 54 knots, although it'd be so heavy at that point that it's pretty much impossible to actually have one like that unless you just don't put any weapons on it. But we'll go to, we'll go to 41 knots. We're actually going to bring this all the way up to... 3,000 tons. And then I'm going to protect these things as much as I can. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, all right, so there's the 75% bonus to HE shell fire chance, which is really what I'm after here. Uh, I want to try and cause those flash fires as best I can. I think we'll, I don't think we need radar. I think what I want is acoustics to be able to keep my eyes on those torpedoes that might be coming from the enemy. And we might have to reduce some other things here once I get a rangefinder on this thing. Yeah, we're a little bit over. There we go. Oh, we have to have at least one torpedo launcher. Okay. We'll throw one on here somewhere. I don't even know where I'll do it. Oh, there we go, right there, perfect. Now we're nine tons overweight. Oh, we can drop the range, that'll solve some of that. Yeah, it actually solved all of it. All right, we're good. Uh, let's go ahead and take this thing out for a spin and hopefully we'll get a chance to see what the flash floods look like. Okay, so here we go. And let's see what we can do. First things first, let's get these guys in. Although tight might not be the best idea when we're facing other destroyers that might have uh, torpedoes going their way. I actually want to get all these guys in one row, but I guess it doesn't matter a whole lot. Let's just get turned to the north. I, I'm really not concerned so much about winning the battle as I am just showing how these flash fires work. And it also looks like they've really done some nice work in making the fires and the an the animations of those look a little nicer. Um, I've always thought the game looked good, but it looks better now. And you can already see the log over here. You can see the damage dealt, the damage received, uh, recent events. So we'll probably get a better look at how that all operates once we see a little more. You can see the information screen looks a little different too. There's all of our components So it might not be the flashiest of updates, and we didn't get a campaign yet. But I like some of what they've done here. I think it's going to add a lot of depth to the game when we do get a campaign. There goes our first torpedo in the water. So I want to slow things down because I want to really be able to explore some of these. See, doesn't that look cool? That looks so much better than the real generic destroyers that we had before. I'm very happy with that. So there's nothing in the log so far because we haven't hit anything. There, we've taken our first damage. So you can see here, one damage taken, or, or one hit out of 122. It, it actually shows how many... Oh, there's a flash fire on my ship. You can see that. You can see that one of the guns got blown right off. the. the oh boy, there goes another one. The guns just flew right up in the air, just blew right off the ship. So we've lost those five inch guns completely. Looks like we're getting the fire under control, but you can see, and it's cool because the flash fire, obviously our am ammunition detonated and it blew those guns off when it did. I love that. And you can see both of those guns have been lost right there. So they're really trying to take into consideration what would happen if that ammunition ammunition blew up and exactly what it would cause I, I think that's cool now that flash fire thankfully did not destroy my ship
So let's take a look here. You can see um, 351. There really been that many fired at me already. Um, I've taken 510 damage. Uh, 1.1 inch is the average that my armor was penetrated. That's really helpful information because that's going to inform our building. So let's say you're doing a mission on the Naval Academy and you can you get a sense of how far they're penetrating the the armor on average. That's going to that's going to inform how you build your ship the next time you do that mission. You're like, "Okay, now I know how much armor I need to have." Uh, one over penetration versus 0.6 uh, inch armor, one penetration versus one inch, and two ammo detonations versus 1.4 inch. So all really detailed information. There were two fires and two parts damaged. Now you can see here what I've done, the average armor I penetrated, the average effective penetration, the number of fires that I've caused. That's really good information to have. So there, we've caused a flash fire on this one, and it looks like it's spreading. So we might get a sinking on this. What happened when I played this a little while ago is, uh, once I got a flash fire going, you very quickly saw the flood damage go down, 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 and just like in a matter of seconds, the ship went from fully functional down to the completely destroyed. But it looks like this guy's getting on top of this fire. But you can see the an am ah, animation. They've really done some work on that, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. All right, they got that fire put out. game just looks really pretty now even more so than it did before that's a lot of torpedoes okay let's speed things up a little bit Looks like not everybody's using, I guess we should fire our smoke too. Not everybody's using HE shells, which is really what I want them to be using. Oh, the Moody just took some hits. Was that a torpedo? Here we go, we can look at the log. Yeah, it was a torpedo hit. Yeah, it's funny because last time I did this, I um, very quickly sank all five destroyers and didn't lose a single one. Different scenario this time around. Although this time I'm fighting Germans and last time it was Russians. I don't know if that matters, but it seems like maybe it does. The Germans have better destroyers. Better get past those guys. Oh boy, I don't think he's going to. Uh, he might. These ones are going to be super close. He might take one of those. Yep. Oh, wow, that was close. You can see here, this guy hasn't caused any damage. But he's taken a bunch. And only eight hits. But those eight hits, you can see there the whole back end of the ship. And now we've got a flash fire on the front, too. This guy's toast. So here we've dealt four hits for 100, uh, four out of 177 shots have landed for hits. It'll be interesting to see that kind of statistical information with the battleships. In fact, let's go ahead, maybe what we'll do is we've seen this, let's go ahead and drop out 
and do the same with some other ships. Okay, just for the purposes of doing this, we've gone ahead and built a German battleship. I just had the computer auto-design it for me. Uh, a 1940 German battleship, and we are going to take on three 1930 French battleships. I just want to see the damage modeling. I want to see how all that kind of plays out in this scenario. So we've got a pretty substantial German battleship here. Again, looks so pretty. I know maybe calling a battleship pretty is not the best way to describe it, but I don't know. I just I just love how it looks. And we're really off in the distance on these guys right now, so we're starting to turn toward them. It's going to take a little while to do that. And you can see so far, 12 shots fired, no hits. 18-inch guns, nice. Looks like we've got a max of 40 inches of armor. We're up to 28 shots fired, nothing to show for it so far. Let's go get a glimpse of the, the French ships. We'll start closing the distance and hopefully start getting some hits so we can see how the log goes and how how all the information shakes out. Okay, so now we're getting to the place where he's starting to fire back. He's landed a couple of hits on me, but you can see here three ricochets. He's actually got a 7.5% chance of hitting so far based on what he's done. I have yet to land one out of 62. Oh, there, it looks like we might have gotten our first hits. You can see even the uh, statistics up here are different. Ally damage summary, that would be across all of my ships if I had multiple ships. Uh, you would see the average statistics overall. The average armor penetrated, 55 inches. Um, the enemy damage, and his average armor penetrated right now, 17.6. There's the partial pens. I love all of that information. That's really going to allow us to get much more skilled at preparing for battles, planning, figuring out what works and what doesn't. And there we go. Now we can see how we're doing. Gonna take this guy out in a hurry. Of course, we're dealing with 1930 French technology, and I've got 18 inch guns on a pretty state of the art German battleship. And you can see the result of that. These these guys are only 40,000 tons each. I've got a 117,000 ton ship. And he's already toast, I think. He only took three hits. But three hits was enough to sink him. So that gives you a pretty good idea. Uh, the only other thing I want to take a look at is let's take a look at some of the other nations, destroyers, and uh, take a look at some of the new cruisers. I think they're Spanish and Japanese. Okay, so let's take a look at the German destroyers. That's a different design. So this is the German destroyer leader. They actually can go a little bigger. They've got all the way up to 35. Nope. So 3,500. That's a long destroyer. Boy, you could really throw some stuff on that. Uh, they've only got one tower for the main tower. Let's look at the secondary towers, have a little bit more. But you could throw one of these rear towers on there and really not take up much space. And that leaves you a, a ton of room. We've even got barbettes for destroyers for the first time. That's new. Haven't seen those. We've got a super firing small barbette there. See, their funnels are completely different. 
Then the American funnels or the British funnels. Here's their main guns. So you could throw a lot of 5 inch guns on one of these German destroyers and still have room for a decent amount of torpedoes. You could really put some firepower on these destroyers and you couldn't do that before. You had very little room for a decent amount of firepower. Okay, we can't put 5 inch guns on on those that little tower. It looks like it's got to be smaller. But there you go. That's an example of just the differences in the different nations destroyers that looks cool. All right. So uh and and, and again, you know, probably different countries are going to have different things. The Russians are probably going to have uh some destroyer designs that the others didn't have. You can see theirs looks different. So you get the point. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the the light cruisers now. Specifically Japanese and Spanish, I think they were. So we've got experimental cruiser, light cruiser there. And you know, honestly, I don't remember what was there before, so I don't know which of these is new. But I'm just kind of looking at some of some of what's here just to kind of give you a little bit of a look at those things that's a pretty cool looking design too I'm, I'm really liking some of the customization options that we're starting to get it's not perfect you know we still don't have quad turrets for battleships um we still don't have a lot of things that would get us what i'd really like to see would be the ability just to say okay make me the hood and it would give me a pre-designed kind of look of that and then i could customize it if i want to you know make me a sharn horst things like that uh, i don't know if they'll have that at some point or if they just kind of want to leave that up to us to be able to do what we want uh, but honestly i'd really rather at this point they just focus on the campaign than building too much new uh, let's go ahead and look at the spanish light cruisers and, and again i'm only looking at 1940 here so i don't know how many design options they have for other time periods in fact, I guess we could look at that uh, and see if there's any difference, say, if we go with a destroyer, but we go with one from 1930. Does it look significantly different? Uh, it appears to a little bit, but I don't know. I don't know that it does, really. I guess it, it's pretty much the same. Maybe if we go back, I don't know, to... 1914 are we looking at something a little different at that point now we basically have the same design they're just smaller uh, we we can't go as big so that gives you a pretty basic look at all of that uh, what we'll do in future episodes on ultimate animal dreadnoughts is we'll start getting into these new naval academy missions and play those out and uh, if there's anything specific you want me to go over in the next video before I do a Naval Academy, Academy mission, let me know and I'll try to show you a little bit more of that. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you guys again so much. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell. That way you find out anytime there's something new that goes up, whether it's a video uh, or a post about a live stream that's coming, things like that. Hit that like if you would and leave a comment. Those are all things that help to let YouTube know that people want to see more of this, uh, and then they'll recommend it to more people, and that'll help me tremendously. So thank you guys, and we'll see you again soon.